Screw pickle back shots, yo. We do an onion back shots now. Yeah, okay, maybe delicious. maybe not on the, maybe not on the second try. <laughs> How's it going, guys? It's Justin from the Delish Test Kitchen. And you know, food can be like the symbol of a holiday. You got turkey and Thanksgiving, lamb with Easter. And truly, I can't think of anything more synonymous with Hanukkah than latkes. It is one of the best potato preparations. They're crispy and fluffy. They are good with so many different things from sour cream, applesauce, lox, caviar. They're really versatile and really easy to make, but there's a couple things we want to think about while we're doing it. Let's get into it. I have my little Hanukkiah here, and there's a difference between Hanukkiahs and menorah. Quick history lesson. Menorahs have seven candle holders, and Hanukkiahs have eight candles and then a ninth to light all the other ones with. But regardless, the reason why I have this here is because I want to remind people that Hanukkah is the festival of lights. And those lights back in ancient biblical days, they were lit by oil. And that's why basically Hanukkah is also the festival of oil and also why we deep fry a lot of things like jelly donuts and of course, latkes. Hey Justin. What's up? So we have an audience question. Sick. What potatoes make the best latkes? That's a great question. Different potatoes are used in different parts of the world for latkes. I know in like Europe, I know some people use Yukon Golds or an equivalent of a waxy potato, which is totally fine. I love russets, good old Idaho potatoes because of their starch content. It allows them to get super, super crispy. And we're actually gonna use some of that starch to act as a binder in our latkes themselves. First thing we're gonna do in our latka preparation is we're gonna peel our potatoes. I know some people like to keep them on, but I don't know, I like it clean and it means I don't have to wipe down my potatoes as thoroughly. Once the potatoes are peeled, you can just have them, get them into manageable pieces and do the same for the onions. Peeled, then halved. Latkes are essentially just fried cakes of shredded potato. And for that reason, how you shred the potatoes actually makes a really big difference. Some folks love to use a box grater and if it's all you got, it will definitely do the job here. But I actually prefer to use the grater attachment on your food processor. And I know you might be looking at this, even if you have a food processor and not know what it is, but that may mean you just shove this in the back of your pantry somewhere or you threw it out. If you're getting a food processor, don't throw this out. This is so versatile and makes unbelievably consistent shreds of potato, carrot, whatever you need to grate. This is a phenomenal tool. All you need to do to install, you get this little rod that comes with your food processor, it comes right on and you slide it in. And it kind of sits as a plate on top that's gonna rotate as we push our potatoes down, making for really consistent shreds. Once your shredding attachment is on, we're gonna start getting our potatoes grated up. So you can see you get these like perfect kind of like ideal little baby shreds using this attachment. Uh, it can kind of seem scary because it's kind of like a potato guillotine, but they're literally designed that you can't hurt yourself. And I'll show you like kind of what the difference looks like. If we just grate some of this potato, it's kind of like flimsy. They're a little thin and a little ragged. This does not make for as delicious and as crispy latkes. So if you have a food processor with this attachment, I highly recommend you use it. The other thing I kind of love about using a food processor for this is that it goes so fast. Something that could take like 10 minutes is literally done in like under a minute and you kind of feel like a culinary wizard and everyone's gonna just think you have amazing knife skills, but you just are lazy and you have a tool for the job. I'm gonna transfer the potatoes to a bowl and then I'm gonna grate the onion separately. The reason that I'm gonna do that and a huge thing we need to be taking care of for this entire preparation is moisture. The more moisture we add to our potato latkes or the more water they retain from these ingredients, the less crispy they're gonna be. So onions have a ton more water content. So doing them separately allows us to drain off a lot more of that liquid more easily. We can already see how much moisture we were able to get away just from literally tipping out that onion juice from here, and that's gonna translate to a better, crunchier latke. You gonna take a sip? Come no. On. Come on, come on, Do it. just a little sip. Honestly, honest opinion, come on, it's gotta be pretty good. Guys, here's the thing. Genuinely very good. Once you shred the potatoes, they're gonna start to oxidize and get this like maroonish, brownish color. That's okay. We're still gonna end up with the golden brown results at the end. We could like submerge the potatoes immediately in water, but as we talked about, we don't want added liquid. So let them oxidize. They will look good at the end. 
I feel so insane now that I drank that onion juice. I legit, like, I, like, feel buzzed. But maybe it's just because, like, I have not eaten today. And that was literally the first calories ingested into my body. But my Polish grandpa used to eat onions like apples. And I feel like he was a boxer and was very virile. And maybe that's the trick. Maybe I should be drinking onion juice every morning. Because I feel insane. <laughs> ah! Even though we were able to strain off a bunch of that juice from the onions, we still need to get rid of the moisture that is locked into these potatoes and onions themselves. So we're gonna pass them and squeeze them through either some cheesecloth, which you can buy at any grocery store, or a clean kitchen towel. Justin. What's up? We have another question. So, do I really have to squeeze out all of the liquid from the potatoes? It takes a really long time. I understand the urge to not do this, but the more effort, the more time you spend squeezing out every last bit of water from this veg will result in crispier, more delicious latkes. This is where we're like making up for all the energy and time we saved using a food processor and not the grinder. It goes into here now. Once you give it a good squeeze, you're literally gonna see that the potatoes look visibly drier. We're already putting in the effort that we need to now. I find the best way to drain this out is to kind of twist the top and the remnants of all your cheesecloth to sort of add more added pressure than just what you're squeezing. The added pressure really helps to get even more liquid out. But it should hurt and it should take a long time and you should be sore after you're doing this. Like do not do arms day right before doing this process. All right, I almost gave myself a literal aneurysm, but I was able to pull out like probably over a cup of juice from all of this veg, which is gonna translate to better latkes. I need to like have a nap, but the thing is you actually have to move quickly with latkes because now the time is ticking. We wanna get our latka batter made and get them fried. The sooner you do it, the better they'll be. Before we do anything else, you actually don't want to throw away this bowl full of onion and potato juice, not because I'm gonna drink it again, I'm already regretting it. It's because at the bottom of this bowl, you can actually kind of see it, there is some potato starch. This is basically a natural bit of thickening agent, or in this case, binder, that we can use in our latkes. So we're gonna drain off the juice, keep that starch, and we're gonna to toss our potatoes and onion in it. It's genuinely really cool. Like it's really viscous. It's almost like like wallpaper paste. And no, I'm not gonna try this alone. I don't wanna like gum up the works before I eat these latkes. So you could technically just take this mixture, form it into as much of a patty as possible and fry it off. That's literally like what they do in parts of Europe. It's called a roasty. It's like a German, Austrian, like Swedish, Swiss thing. But to make it a latke, we have to make a little bit of a batter and make it a binder so it's more of a cake and you have those like fluffy, tender insides. And for that, we're gonna use a couple of things. We're going to use the potato starch, some egg, and we're also gonna use something called matzo meal. This is kind of the secret ingredient to a really good latke. Matzo meal is obviously just like matzo crackers that they use for Passover, crushed into somewhere between like a breadcrumb and a flour texture. It's used in place of flour for things like frying, dredging, and even in desserts for Passover when we can't eat leavened bread. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our potato starch, get everything nice and coated. Then we're gonna alternate like with half the egg and about half of the matzo meal. Then a little bit more egg, a little bit more matzo meal until you have a texture there where you can like form a patty. You don't want it too wet, still a little dry, still a little bit like stringy, potato-y, but can form a nice patty. Then we're gonna add some salt and then we're ready for frying, baby. Frying time! In terms of oil, we don't wanna use olive oil. It does impart a nice flavor, but deep frying in olive oil can cause like kind of like acridness if you go too hard. And it can kind of be finicky and really expensive. So for here, we just want something neutral, vegetable, canola, peanut oil, any of the frying oils make sense. The other thing, we wanna use more oil than you think. Go heavy. I know a lot of people might like shallow fry so that even like most of the latke is sticking out above the oil itself. 
This isn't a healthy food. We wanna go a little hard. And adding more oil will result in more evenly cooked, more crispy latkes, and it will take less time to cook it. I'm gonna go with like a medium high here. You don't wanna like grip it and rip it for the heat on these latkes. Otherwise you might end up with like overdone or burnt outsides and then like super raw interiors. Medium high should be good. You do wanna preheat this, like get this going about like two minutes before you're ready to fry. Going in with room temp oil, you'll get super oily latkes. So let it get a little hot, test it with a little bit of batter. Once it's nice and sizzly, it'll be good to go. When I form latkes, I like them to be kind of rustic and not too thick. If they're too thick, you may end up with them being kind of like not super well done or a little raw on the insides. And I also like a little bit of like scraggliness on the outside, just a little bit of potato sticking out. I don't want like a perfect little potato cake. You kind of want them to look a little rustico. Make as many latkes that can fit into your pan without overcrowding. Then you're gonna fry them about three to four minutes per side, flipping once or twice just to get that even beautiful golden brown crust on the outside then transfer them to some paper towels, let them drain off, and make sure that you finish with a little sprinkling of salt as we should with any deep fried food because that bit of salt right after they come out of the fryer will adhere better. I had to do something really quick. That's a pat on the back. That is a perfect latke. You heard the crunch on the outside. It's tender on the inside. You need that sharp yet sweet oniony flavor on the inside. It adds a lot of like complexity. Weirdly, even though it's just one ingredient, it's why we add onions to almost everything we cook. It's not gummy at all. Using the matzo meal totally prevents that. And you can top this in a bunch of different ways. You can use sour cream or applesauce. I like both. I know a lot of people only will do one or the other, but do both. Maximalism, baby. You could make a sandwich. You could like put brisket on this with gravy. You could like make like a Thanksgiving leftover sandwich, but using latkes as the bread. The uses are versatile and endless. I think I'm proven right. These are the best potato preparation possible. But wait, there's more. It's time for leftover land, baby. Latkes are incredible leftover food. I like to use them basically as bread in sandwiches. Like all, you could do like basically make like a lagel, like a latka bagel where you just put like cream cheese, lox, whatever. But we're gonna make a latka pizza. Couldn't be simpler. We're just gonna take like your favorite pizza sauce, spoon a little bit over top, crumble up a little bit of fresh mozzarella, get it on top of there. Toss it into a hot oven, let it get all melty, and for the tomato sauce to get a little caramelized, couldn't be simpler. You can top this any way you want. You can use mushrooms, olives, anchovies, any of your favorite pizza toppings will go well here, but sometimes it's nice to just have like a nice cheese latke pizza. I also think I invented this, so um, trademark TM. You can't steal this from me, this is my idea, don't take it. Look at this perfect little pizza man. I love all things mini, it makes it more enjoyable like just by default. And I just like these little pieces of basil, I gotta give it a try. It changes the latke entirely in a way I could have never expected. It's basically like a vegetarian chicken parm. That's sort of the vibe that I'm getting from this. It's really, really good. I know that we dip mozzarella sticks and calamari in marinara sauce. I think that maybe we should be dipping our latkes in marinara sauce. So this might have unlocked something very big for me, and I think I may be forever changed. Latkes are my absolute favorite holiday potato preparation, but I imagine you have your favorite. So for more potato inspiration and recipes, head on over to delish.com all season long. Later, everybody.